as you know, tonight we're starting a new series, and the new series is in the book of Daniel, and the best recent book on the book of Daniel is this book right here by John Lennox. If you haven't picked this book up, I would highly recommend you do. It comes in Kindle. As you can see, it's, it's quite a big read, but it's a very good read, and uh, Lennox is a wonderful guy. I've had the opportunity to work with him a little bit, had him over the house. This is about a year and a half ago. And uh, if everybody was like John Lennox, the entire world would be Christianized today because this guy is so likable and so brilliant and it's so charming, just a wonderful guy. And he has some great insights on the book of Daniel. And this book goes through every chapter and it gives you the whole structure of the book and it really applies it to today. How does the book of Daniel apply to us today? Now, those of you uh, who are Bible students know that the book of Daniel is in the Old Testament. Daniel is a prophet and also an historian. And uh, the overview of the book of Daniel is basically in two parts. The first six chapters deals with Daniel's ministry in Babylon. Now, why would a Jew be in Babylon? Because they were exiled to Babylon, as you know, in about 600 B.C. In fact, Daniel's exile was in about 605. Then there was a much bigger exile in about 586 when the Babylonians completely destroyed Israel and destroyed the temple. The second half of the book, chapter 7 through 12, deals with Daniel's vision of the future. Uh, some of what he envisioned was short-term future. In other words, it's already happened. Other aspects of this section of Daniel has still yet to happen. So he's prophesied about events that have since happened, since his day, and there are other events that are really dealing with the end of all time, like the final resurrection. So Daniel is an historian and a prophet. Now let's just take a quick look at the first six chapters just to kind of give us an overview. Daniel is in Babylon and he spends most of his life there. He is probably maybe 15, some probably somewhere between 15 and 20, and, and 20 when he's taken from Judah and he's exiled to Babylon with some of his friends. So he's a very, very young man. He spends, as, as, as best we can tell, the rest of his life there. And he lives probably to 80, maybe 90 years old, somewhere in there. But he never, I, I don't think he ever gets back to Judah when he's exiled, after he's exiled to Babylon. Here are the first six chapters. And you're going to recognize some phrases because many of the phrases or idioms that we use in our language today actually come from the book of Daniel. Chapter 1, Daniel does not want to defile himself and some people now call that the Daniel diet. Have you heard of the Daniel diet? There's books written about it. In fact, Rick Warren and others have put out books. What is the Daniel diet? Chapter 2 deals with interpreting King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And that's a very exciting chapter, and we'll get to that next time. We're going to do chapter 1 today. But his dream... In Daniel's day in Babylon, they had magicians and they had people who are, were supposed to be astrologers who supposedly were to interpret dreams of the king. And as you'll see, when we get to chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar has this dream and he calls his uh, astrologers and magicians in and says, I'd like you to interpret the dream. And they all go, great, that's what we do. That's what you pay us for. What's the dream? And he goes, uh -uh, I'm not telling you what the dream is. Uh-oh. you got to tell me what the dream is and then what the interpretation is. If you're really all that smart and you really have all these skills, tell me what the dream was. And then he calls Daniel in, and we'll get to it next week. Chapter 3 is idolatry and the fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are thrown into the furnace. You've all heard this. Even if you're not a Christian, you've probably heard about this. Being thrown into the fiery furnace. That's what chapter 3 is about. Chapter 4 is King Nebuchadnezzar's second dream. He actually goes mad for a period, and he actually converts to belief in God. And in fact, much of what we read in chapter 4 is written by Nebuchadnezzar himself. Chapter 5 is the handwriting on the wall. We use that phrase all the time. Oh, man, we could see the handwriting on the wall. Man, if he couldn't see the handwriting on the wall, he's blind. The handwriting's on the wall. What's the handwriting on the wall? You'll see when we get there. But that phrase, 
taken directly from an incident in the book of Daniel. And then, of course, chapter 6 is Daniel in the lion's den. Wow, man, we were in the lion's den there, weren't we? Well, that guy goes right into the lion's den. That comes from the book of Daniel. Now, the theme of Daniel, what do you think the theme of Daniel is? 